Hello, everyone. My name is Molly Halsey, and I'm the event specialist here at EDV. I will be your host today for our webinar, New Integration Options with Postgres Enterprise Manager 8. I'm joined today by Anthony Waite, Senior Product Manager, and Scott Grant, Product Marketing Manager. Now, before we get started, I have just a few housekeeping items to go over. So this presentation is being recorded. We will be sharing the recording along with the slides after the broadcast. The lines are currently muted. If you have a question, please feel free to submit it in the question panel. Today's session is scheduled for one hour. We expect the presentation to last most of our time and we will allot any extra time for Q&A. If we do not have time to address all questions, we will follow up afterwards with any attendee whose question was not answered. Now, without further ado, I hand it over to Scott and Anthony. Great, thanks, Excellent. Molly. Thank you, Molly. Um, actually, before I get into that first poll there, I just want to do a real quick uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I won't go on a long uh, 2020 speech because we all have heard a million of those, but uh, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day uh, to be here in December. We're all trying to close out the quarter and the year. So thank you to anyone, uh, any new listeners uh, and anyone who's, uh, and especially if you've been here repeatedly, checking out our, uh, our webinar content. Uh, this will be our last one for the year, and we're going to go over uh, what's new in Postgres Enterprise Manager. And we are going to kick it off with a poll. Yes, so launching this very first poll, we have, are you currently using PEM? The options are yes, no, or not yet planning to use. So we'll give everyone a little bit of time to answer. Already within the first 12 seconds, we had 58% of the audience answer. We'll give everyone just a little bit more time. We're almost hitting 70%. So we got a lot of people very active this morning. 80%, we'll give it just another five seconds for any last people who wanna throw an answer in. All right, here are the results. Okay, interesting. Yeah, we're at about a third using it. Okay, good to know. Thanks everyone for, uh, for hopping in on the poll that helps us uh, kind of frame our talk here. Great. All righty, quick view of the agenda now. We're going to talk about um, a little bit about um, why you would use Postgres Enterprise Manager and a little context around uh, what it is and how it fits into the EDB product suite. Uh, we'll get into what's new. Uh, the, the big focus today, as you know from the title, is integration. So we're going to talk a lot about what's uh, going on with the REST API. And uh, webhooks were just launched very recently. And we'll cover a few other notable features uh, that are kind of quick to review, just, uh, just a nice to know if you are using PEM or are planning on uh, possibly using it in the future. And there will be an actual uh, video demo of how the webhooks work. Key takeaways here are that the webhooks are a new way to, uh, to push notifications to other systems. We've had a lot of customer requests for that. Um, Anthony, our product manager, will be speaking to that in a moment. Uh, we've expanded the REST API. Uh, it's been there for a while, but we uh, made some significant improvements uh, and added additional endpoints this year to give you more flexibility for integrations. Uh, and we've added additional support for open source Postgres uh, in PEM. And I'm gonna explain a little bit more about that as we go. So why Postgres Enterprise Manager? First off, what is it actually? Uh, and it's an interface uh, you can use to control and optimize Postgres. Uh, it's got management and, and administration built in, monitoring and alerts, uh, and tuning and diagnostics. Uh, it's it's browser-based. There's a pretty easy to use GUI that you can uh, get around in. There's a lot there. Uh, it's a favorite tool of ours. Uh, it goes along with a lot of other tools as well as our core database product in the EDB suite. Uh, it's a very popular one. Lots of our customers use it. Uh, and what's really notable is that you can use this, and some of us, our customers do use this as that single plane pane of glass cliche. You can do everything here, uh, while others want to be feeding this, uh, some of the data and diagnostics and alerts into other systems. And that's kind of the focus for today. Uh, quick plug here, I promise not to go too far in the sales and marketing direction, so just bear with me. Uh, a lot of you aren't using PEM yet or are planning to, so I just want to give you a brief overview of how that fits uh, in with the EDB product suite overall. Um, so we have two main subscription types if you're going to work with EDB uh, in the software layer there. We, we do work well with Postgres, open source Postgres. We wouldn't exist without it. We love Postgres. Open source Postgres is awesome. And you can use our tooling suite with that, with our standard subscriptions. We also have what we call EDB Postgres Advanced Server, 
if that's kind of a mouthful, we refer to it as EPASS. And that's our proprietary product built on top of open source Postgres. And you can also use that with our tooling suite. Now, in addition to that, we're not getting into these things today, but we have a lot of support uh, and uh, design and build services, we call them, uh, that you can that you can use with us as well. So the important part is that most of what we're showing you works with both open source Postgres and with our proprietary uh, EDB Postgres advanced server. Uh, and again, this uh, PEM product, it's not something you purchase separately, but it's included with all of our standard and enterprise subscriptions. So you could have a, a very minimal subscription level and you're gonna have full access to everything uh, that Anthony will be showing you today. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce the superhero to my sidekick, our product manager, Anthony. <laughs> He's going to talk a little bit about, in the first place, why wouldn't you use your other DB, DBMS tools? Uh, Anthony, why would I want to use Postgres-specific products? Well, um, one of the reasons is that this particular product, Postgres Enterprise Manager, it's in its name, is it's built by Postgres experts. So um, the product itself is we stay on top of all the various releases in the open source community. Um, so we're fully aware of new features, taking advantage of them. Um, even so, our back end of the, uh, of the product itself, the, the, um, what we call is um, PEM, short for Postgres Enterprise Manager, it also uses um, the uh, Postgres. So it could be either the open source or EPASS, as, just as you mentioned. So um, this tool is, as you mentioned before too, it's a single pane of glass. And we've got some slides to kind of describe its um, overarching capabilities. It's just not a, um, like an IDE um, focused on a specific, um, you know, Postgres um, community um, in terms of management or administration of the, these databases, um, but it's also monitoring and alerting. So, um, it's the glue, so to speak, of um, your Postgres estates. It can you know, take care of the development. Um, so you can think of it, it's targeted toward developers and also for the, um, the DBAs um, and being able to integrate, um, which we're gonna talk about into your, um, your ecosystem, your infrastructure that you already have. Great. And uh, before we dive into some of those details, we've got one more poll question. Yes. So for the next poll, launching it now, the question is, what tools are you using for monitoring PostgreSQL? The options are Nagios, Datadoc, Prometheus or Grafana, SolarWinds, Zabbix, or other. So already first 15 seconds, we've had 30% of the audience vote. Answers coming in pretty fast. We'll give it just another, we're at 50% now. We'll give it another five seconds for anyone last minute just wanting to vote. All right, and here are the results. This is interesting, yeah. Um, see yep. here that, um, um, Nagios and Zabbix are, are on the, are most commonly used. Um, it, oh, actually, sorry, Prometheus and Grafana is, um, which makes a lot of sense, um, open source is um, most commonly used, then followed um, with a tie with um, Nagios and Zabbix. By the way, the reason why I'm speaking to these numbers is um, for those that are listening to the recording, um, they're unfortunately, they cannot see these results. And that's the reason why we have it also on the, the poll on the slide. And that's why I'm kind of <laughs> repeating what you're seeing now. <laughs> so it's it's painfully obvious, but uh, <laughs> yep. for the recording. I, I, yeah, and I think we're not shocked. There's a 60% say other. Um, so the marketing side of my brain wants to get a, get another poll out there to all of our customers. But, uh, but Prometheus and Grafana is probably what we hear most commonly uh, along with all these other tools. Absolutely. So yeah, not, not shocking, but thanks for participating there. Alrighty, so uh, just a little bit more uh, about the, the product itself uh, before I, I hand this back over. Um, what's, what's unique here, uh, as we've been uh, hinting at, is that you can really cover everything with Postgres Enterprise Manager. 
So you've got your, your managing in one interface. Uh, you can do the optimization here. Uh, monitoring and alerting. Again, we're going to be talking a lot about how to plug that into other systems. So you don't have to be going back and forth to PEM, you know, for those alerts. Uh, and integration has been a really key theme uh, to our uh, our roadmap and our release schedule throughout 2020. Uh, and we know that's very important to our customers. Uh, again, you're all using lots of other tooling. And uh, I think a lot of uh, ops teams roll their eyes when they hear there's going to be another tool rolled out. So if you're among the many folks here who are not using PEM, and uh, especially those of you who are considering it, uh, you're probably uh, going to be most interested in those integrations so that you're not throwing entirely new tools at teams that don't directly deal with the database. You're going to have the specialized database management, and we're going to talk about how to how to plug it in.